nice little thing to, to kind of consider. <coughs> What's the cost of it? Is it expensive? It can be. I mean, it really is. It, you know, I'm not trying to be vague. I'm, I'm really not. But like, for instance, sculpture, which can last up to you know three to five years. What what my procedure is, and most people kind of do a monthly injection for about three months, and then that lasts for a good three to five years. Each series of injections is about a thousand dollars, so it's about three thousand dollars total. But the you'll see. I don't think I showed any sculpture, but it, it's the fillers are the same. And it's, it's a remarkable change from a volume standpoint. It, it really is remarkable. So if you've seen people with a filler, uh, and the thing that I love about sculpture is it's very subtle. Because it, what it actually does is your body creates a little bit of a reaction around it. And so it, it kind of gradually builds up the, the structure rather than coming in the next day. And like, wow, you look amazing. <laughs> you know? and, and then they know that something, you know, that you went and did some wrestling or some radius or which is more of an immediate type of thing. So is like the, the Restylane and the Juvederm yes. and the Sculpture, are they all basically the same ingredient? Or no, they're like the Restylane, Juvederm uh, are like hyaluronic acids. Sculpture is actually kind of a ground up substance. And what they've done is that you suspend it into a solution then you inject it and then <coughs> over time your body will build up a response to that and create that response. So you would use the sculpture like where if you were sinking from the bones then? And, yes. And then just I, do the sculpture was the first one. It's, it was originally uh, for HIV lipodystrophy which means you know if you see an HIV patient you know their their cheeks get sunken in and they lose the waste up and through the temple areas and so it's, it's like in the, the AIDS or the homosexual community it's, it, it can be like a stigma. You know, everyone knows that you're on the heart therapy, you have the HIV, lipodystrophy, and so when they created the sculpture, it was, it's actually one of the, the few FDA indications for sculpture, is that you go in there and you kind of help establish some of that volume that's lost. And so that, that really changed a lot of people's thinking, and even the rest of them that we just used to spackle, kind of right through here in the, in, in the meal labia folds and kind of down and through here, that even the rest of them now I use as a volume restorer. You know, I'll come down here and put it on the bone in through here. And if you just kind of put it in through here, you actually don't need to treat it through here. It just kind of softens that junction up really, really nicely. And so you, even Restylane can help restore volume. It's a, and Sculpture is what kind of changed that whole paradigm, is that we're trying to restore that volume loss that, that was there. Rather than trying to you know, treat the, the symptom, we're going for the cure by trying to restore that volume. Unfortunately, that cure is only a temporary cure because you have to restore that volume that, that degrades over time. Okay, So hyaluronic acid is, is a, um, a substance that our body makes naturally, and so that's, that's it's kind it of... It just gets absorbed back? Yeah. yeah, it really does. And that's the same for the sculpture too? No, the sculpture is actually ground up um, the suture material, believe it or not. The, the suture material that we put down deep into the skin to help bring, you know, for surgery, uh, what they found was that Hmm. You know, that creates a little bit of a you know, tissue reaction. Let's grind it up and see what happens, and it restores volume. It kind of helps restore some of that volume loss by the tissue reaction that it creates. So it's kind of a cool little deal. Smart, smart idea. So, so over 70 you can actually look like for 50. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's quite impressive, actually. Um, you know, there's, every person's different, and everyone's facial structure is different, and your genetics have a big part to play in that, the, the, the amount of sun that you had. Um, you know, being a laser guy and being a laser expert, I get sent patients all the time, we'll do laser and then we'll do a facelift. Well, actually, the better way to go about this is you do your facelift, you do a little fillers and do a laser at the same time, so that way you can kind of restore some of that. You tighten up the skin a little bit, but very subtly, you know, a good, a good plastic surgeon. Um, and do it very subtle, and then what you do is you come in, you restore some of the volume, and then you come back with the laser to help with the texture, and that, that would easily, you know, for a lot of people, take 20 years off. Yeah. Well, there's that procedure out now, um, the ultra, the ultra therapy with the the. Ultra. Ultra. Yes, with the ultrasound. Yes. Yeah, it, is that is that is it been proven that that actually lifts the skin? No. What it does is it goes to a a, a covering kind of an aponeurosis that it, it's below, it's, it's around the muscle structure and what it does is it kind of helps create um, some damage, some temporary you know, damage to help tighten. I mean, that's what all lasers do is you, it's like the space shuttle. 
you know, if you come in too steep, you'll burn up. You come in too shallow, you're going to bounce out of the atmosphere. So it's that very small, it's that in, nice in-between area of just a little bit of damage that your body is able to repair. Okay. So the ultheras and all those uh, techniques certainly can be uh, can be beneficial. Uh, ultheras, it's helpful, you know, and uh, it's not going to take the place of plastic surgery and and facelifts, though. So it, it can be. Is subtly helpful, yes. I mean, but all these lasers can be subtly helpful because it's the combination of all these things together that really give you the wow factor. There's not one thing, not one laser that's going to do everything. That's, you know. But you have to do a little bit. So you have to like win the lotto. <laughs> you know, it. Uh, you know, certainly there are things, and that's where you know talking with someone who's knowledgeable rather than just someone who's trying to you know sell you a therapy. I know that there's some people in town that uh, just got their Ulthera and they're they're selling it like a banshee. You know, they're they're trying to uh, you know they're, they're they're wanting to get their money back out of the, of the machine. And I, I think that it's a little bit left to be proven because it's one of the, it's the new kid on the block is always the sexy one and. and Always the one that everyone wants, and so I think it will time will tell, honestly. And you know, kind of a combination of factors is, is the key. And there's, uh, I'm a big uh, long term, you know, tortoise versus the hare approach. And I think that there's a recent study out that I think is going to really help people from a financial standpoint still maintain the ability to maintain youthfulness. There's a guy in California who did just a very simple procedure, you know, it's a, a type of laser procedure, and he did it once, twice a year on patients. And he looked back after their, at their pictures about 10 years after doing this on a regular, consistent basis. Most of the time it was twice a year. And amazingly enough, even with or without fillers and Botox, their, their skin texture and their ability, you know, using sunscreen, actually they looked almost just as young, if not younger, when they were like 50 versus when they were 40. Okay? I've always kind of gone along that mantra anyway, that, you know, a little bit of slow, methodical approach is, is the key. And I learned that the hard way with my burn patients, and, because their skin is never as intact. And if you can, and it's really not that far of a stretch, burn skin is not that much different in some respects as sun damage skin. Okay, they've lost a lot of their natural integrity. Okay? And so not one thing at one shot is going to reverse everything. So it's something that you've got to kind of do on a, a consistent basis. That's why sunscreen on a consistent basis. The retin-A on a consistent basis. I like actually Botox. It's been shown that if you have creases that are permanent, that if you use Botox for you know every four months on a consistent basis for four years, those creases have a tendency to fade, fade, fade away. Because it's that chronic lifting and that's you know that rotation that I kind of talked about, that's why that rotation thing is very effective, is because it won't allow some of those permanent creases to occur. So again, it's that long, slow, methodical approach to kind of help slow down the aging process rather than trying to completely trick the aging process because that that is just not going to happen. Okay. I mean, look at you know look at maybe an 80 year old that had a breast implant when, you know, 20 years ago. You know that that's it just doesn't look natural. Okay. So that's kind of one of the analogies that I really like to use is that it's better to be subtle in my opinion. I mean I can do and, and help people do the extravagant but I try to convince them to do the, the sub. And that would be my advice to you today. So, filler. Um, what you can see is the hollowness. So on the top one, kind of look at her eyes, see the shadowing right up beneath their eye, the, the brightness of the flash, versus on the on her right, on the the that kind of uh, light is now gone because of the volume restoration there. And she's not that old, but she even looks younger uh, from there. Here, you can kind of see these lines in through here. See these folds in through here. See how that's nice and soft now? Soft, these kind of blended in really nice. 
that's subtle. That's beautiful. Okay, that's that's a normal uh, kind of thing that I think is it has a lot of qualities to it. One of the things that's kind of overlooked is you know, people spend all this time and money on their face, but you know the hands something that's overlooked. And I'm a big proponent of trying to do things with the hands. Now it, you can unfortunately sometimes it does take a lot of money, but you know, don't think about just up and through here. Think about the whole body and don't forget about the hands. It's one of the things I really like to stress with people is that the hands can really show the age sometimes more than the face will. Okay? Um, so don't forget about the hands. Are you still active duty? I'm sorry. It's okay. I am, but I, I still i am uh, evolving. I have permission to uh, see patients all face. So about one day a week now and eventually two days a week and then full time here for about six months. Oh, um, where do you, are you at Fort Sam or? I, I run the program so I'm both places actually. Oh, so I'm in the military. I was just Okay. Yeah, I, both places um, is where I, I have a tendency to go. I'm mostly at Wolfsburg Hall but because I'm, I'm the, I run the show I guess I, I have to go to both places. I prefer Wolfsburg. They're, they're easier on me taking pictures and my lasers, and uh, I, I take patients to the OR from a burn perspective. And so, I had a question when you're talking about like the sebaceous glands and stuff. I had, my husband has uh, he was a sebaceous cyst. And yes. Like before our wedding pictures and stuff, we had them removed, um, but some of them are coming back. And I was wondering, do you do something like that there, or what do you do? Or yeah, I mean, it, it would depend on. Um, you know, how they were removed, if they were just kind of lanced, then... No, like, you should cut it open and... Okay. Them out. Yeah. The, the problem with a lot of hair follicles and, and um, those type of things is, is the recurrence of all these things, is that the propensity to form it is adjacent to the adjacent pore as it was, just as much as it was to the one that we removed. And so because of the trauma, that's actually my goal is to make scarless surgery. You know, because of my burn scar experience, we're actually creating medications and, and techniques to actually prevent any scars after surgery. Pretty close, I mean, it's pretty, some of the stuff we're doing is pretty darn cool. I actually got my son, I treated, my son is notorious for getting cuts and bruises and concussions. And so I actually, uh, he had a big old cut right up here on his, on his cheek, and I did him what I think is gonna be the, the, one of the more optimal ways to treat scars, and so, to prevent things, sometimes I like to do some treatments around the scar itself, but sometimes you just got to do it over and over and over. And there are some people that are just prone to that, and you know, Accutane may be in consideration to kind of help prevent as much as what you can from that occurring. Okay. Well, please, you know, I'm going to grab a, a sip of water so my, my throat's kind of dry, but otherwise I'd be more than happy to kind of stick around. The same, the same fillers that you use for the face, you do it in very, very dilute. You actually put some numbing medication or some water and you dilute it out so that way you can kind of just inject because there's a lot of nerves and arteries and veins. So you want to be very select on where you inject it and then you inject it and kind of massage it into the surrounding areas. And so you actually end up with that same volume restoration appearance is what you put on the face. And actually, just did a patient, she let me inject one hand and not the other. Uh, actually, that patient right there. And so uh, that way I can actually show people tangibly, you know, the, the improvement that you can get from, uh, from addressing those situations.